Hello, Marysville musicians, and welcome to another edition of Music with Mr. E. 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 Previously on Music with Mr. E. We met Jimmy, the executive producer of Music with Mr. E. We learned that a percussion instrument is an instrument that you make the sound by striking it, shaking it, or scraping it. We found instruments by going into the kitchen and getting pots and pans and shakers and using them to create new sounds. Mr. E drank coffee. And he introduced you to bucket drumming. So today we're going to be making instruments at home. But before we can make these instruments, we have to understand how it makes it sound. And more importantly, what is sound? Sound is a vibration that travels through the air or another medium that can be heard when they reach a person's ear. So as we're creating our instruments today, we're going to have to figure out what causes the sound or the vibration before we can build our instrument. For our first instrument, we're going to start in my very weedy backyard, and we're going to be creating an idiophone in the form of a shaker. Now remember, an idiophone is a percussion instrument that vibrates when it is shaken, struck, or scraped. So if you have a water bottle, you just walk on over here, grab a little gravel, Put your gravel in, take a little or a lot. You could also use rice or beans or other things from inside the kitchen. Put it in your water bottle. And you have a very simple shaker. You could also get some Tupperware and put Legos in. Pretty much anything that you can put something in and seal and then shake it can be turned into a shaker or an idiofoam. For our next instrument, we're going to create another percussion instrument, but this one here is going to be a membranophone. Now remember from last time that a membranophone is a percussion instrument that is a membrane or some sort of skin or something like that stressed over a frame. So today we're going to look at a duct tape drum. Now, this one here was created by my friend, Miss Terry Smith, who is a former music teacher at Grove, and she took duct tape, stretched it across a tube. This tube here was a, I think it was a concrete form. We can find other tubes, or you can also find cans, large coffee cans, or other buckets. You stretch the duct tape across it, and you're gonna to want to do a couple layers going different directions. And then you're going to want to start sealing it around the outside with duct tape around the edge. So that way you hold the duct, uh, the drum head down. And then you can, you know, you can add rainbow duct tape, camouflage duct tape, whatever color duct tape you want. I have some uh, bacon and pigs that I've done on drums before. And then you can create a simple drum. Our next instrument is going to be from the strings family. Now, remember with the string instrument, the sound is made when, and I'm going to grab my guitar here, the string vibrates. And depending on how thick or how thin the string is, we'll determine whether it goes low or high. And the other way to adjust it is adjust the length. So I could take the same note, shorten the string, and that causes the string to be shorter and the vibration to go faster. So thickness of string and length of string and the amount of tension 
depending on how tight you tighten the string going from, let me go here. If I tighten it up, it vibrates faster. Loosen it, it vibrates slower. And all of those are taken into account when you are figuring out how to build a string instrument. All right, so here is our shoebox guitar. I started by taking a shoebox. You could also use a tissue box. And I cut a hole in the middle because even though we have strings, we need the body of the instrument to for the sound to reverberate and get louder. And so I cut a hole in it. And then I picked four rubber bands. Each one was slightly thinner or thicker than the others. So I started with my lowest one, my thickest string, and then got a thinner one, thinner one, and a thinner one. Now, if I wanted to change the pitch more, I could wrap this rubber band around the pencil here. I'm not actually gonna do that right now, but you can see that by adding a little extra pressure on here, I actually made the pitch go higher. So you can play around with it and twist the rubber bands around the pencils. Now I put the pencils here because you need it to be able to vibrate. And so it's really vibrating just between this pencil and this pencil. If it was laying flat, it wouldn't be able to vibrate and so it would just sound really thuddy and icky. So you don't wanna have that. Now, if you make an instrument like this, you could also use uh, paper towel tubes to make a neck for it or you could, and you can decorate it, maybe wrap it in paper before you assemble it and you can decorate it and color it however you like so you can have your own custom guitar. This is it for the, I would say the entry level instrument building. Now the next couple instruments I'm gonna show you is gonna take a little more help from someone who's older in your house. So these next two are gonna ask mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, big brother, big sister, if they're adult age, to help you with those tunes. So far, the instruments we've created have been either shaken, struck, or plucked. Our next two instruments are going to require air to create the sound. Our first instrument is going to be a flute. Now, a flute is part of the woodwind family, and so it is airborne, and you blow, in a case of a flute, you blow across a hole. The hole causes the airstream to split in two, and the air then starts to vibrate. Then, as you cover the finger holes, the pitch goes lower. So, let's see if I can do this today. And so I took a piece of PVC pipe and um, I drilled holes here. This would be for the air hole that you blow into. By the way, I'm not a flute player. And then I drilled six finger holes in. Now, in this one here, I have included the blueprints for this in the description down below in the video. So you can get the blueprints from this and then work with some adult in your household to create this one. I also took a cap to put on the top so that way it means that all the air is focused going down instead of being split two ways. Um, you could cover it up with tape or putting a cork in there as well. I found this cap here worked really well to seal it. And the last instrument I'm going to show you today is a brass instrument. And of course, this one's also going to be made out of plastic. But a brass instrument makes it sound by you buzzing your lips first. So you're going to do some horse lips like this. Depending on how fast you buzz your lips, it will either have a low pitch or a high pitch. Also depending on the size of the mouthpiece, will determine 
how low or how high you go, and finally, how long the tube is. I'm gonna give you an example of a plastic PVC pipe trombone today. Let me back up a little bit for you. So, got two pieces of pipe, they slide in together. I'm gonna buzz my lips. Now, to make this work, I got two different sizes of pipe. They were the same length at one point, but they were different diameters, meaning that one is gonna be smaller across than the other, so they can slide together. Now, the longer the, pit, the tube goes, the lower the pitch. But also, if I wanted to go, I can adjust the pitch just by how fast I'm buzzing my lips or my embouchure. The embouchure is the shape of your lips when you're buzzing into it. Now, to make this work, it wasn't just taking two pipes and putting them together. That'd be pretty easy. But what I had to do is I had to, I ended up cutting a little bit off of this guy here and then I taped it to the smaller one. That way, I had a mouthpiece already built in. Now, you might be able to find some pipe fitting that could stick on this end. You could tape it on as well. Whatever you need. But you're going to need a big enough piece that you can buzz your lips inside of it. Mm -hmm. If I tried to do it on this end, I could do it. But it, wouldn't, it would sound more like, you know, it would be too high of a pitch for a trombone. The other thing I did is I wrapped electrical tape around the other end opposite of the mouthpiece. So that way I got a tighter seal so there was less air escaping. This concludes another edition of Music with Mr. E. e, e. Remember that there are blueprints for both the guitar and the flute in the directions down below. But you could also make the drum or the shaker or the trombone. If you make any of those, I would love to see your creations. So please take a picture of it or a video of yourself playing it. And then you can email it to Mr. Eliason. And the directions or the address are also down below in the description to this video. I look forward to seeing your creations. And until next time, keep on making music.